Oh, it's good to have you back, Creamer. And those aren't bugs in there. Those are coffee grinds. At least I hope they are. Oh, that's good. It's my second channel, daily vlog channel. It's... I almost spilled my coffee. It's the Daily Woo. I want to talk about a particular subject real quick. It involves three key points. The past, the present, and the future. The majority of people that you meet always will judge you on what you are doing presently. And this also not only goes for people you just met, but also people you know and have known for a long time. And that's what I want to talk about. Don't always focus on the present. Let's talk about someone's past. You always hear these stories of someone who was down on their luck at one point, and then over a few years got motivated, devoted themselves to something, and then became the leader of a Fortune 500 company. You think the majority of the population care about what this now successful businessman did 10 years ago, his struggles, what he had to deal with to get where he was, his motivation and the focus that he showed slaving every day to make his business successful? No, the majority of the population, including probably me and you, do not look at it that way. All we can think of is either jealousy, our thought process is he's always had that. We do not look at the big picture. And that's kind of a bummer. And that goes with anyone's current day, their present day activities and what they are doing now. They came from a past. They had a past to get to their present. No matter what their situation is, at one point they had a past that progressed to a present. And this is why it is vitally important to make the decisions that you feel necessary to get to where you want to be. Because in the past, people will forget about the decisions you made, the progress that you have to make, the ordeals you have to deal with to get to the current day status of what you want to be and who you want to be. And people are always gonna see the present. They're not gonna see the decisions you made in the past. So if you have a decision you wanna make and you're battling with this decision, and you're thinking, what are people gonna think about my decision making? Are they gonna frown upon what I have to do, what I want to do, what I desire to do? Always remember, down the road, in the future, that will be the present day. I'm talking like Doc Brown right now. And how do we get from the present to the future? How do we progress from current day and to the future? You can do it a couple different ways. You can sit on a couch every day, every night, doing nothing, talking with your friends, basically having people over, talking about how you're gonna do certain things. Down the road, this is gonna happen. One day I'm gonna do this, one day I'm gonna do this, and then three, four, five years. When you're in the future, you're still sitting on a couch, similar to this one, talking with your friends, doing the same things, and that is why people do not believe your future will be any different than your present because the majority of people, myself included at times, talk, 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 talk about what they're gonna do instead of just going out and getting it done. Just always remember when you talk to someone who's telling you their plans, if they are a motivated person and they're seeing progress, do not deny that person the ability to infiltrate your brain into realizing that one day their future could possibly be different than their present. Keep all three of these things in mind, the past, the present, and the future. Everyone has a past to get to the present, and everyone, if motivated enough, this includes you, will have a prosperous and very beneficial and at least happy to the soul future, and things will always happen. Keep your head up, keep moving forward, that's basically all I'm trying to say. I know this is very confusing. Let's continue with the vlog. Gotta run. What the heck is that? That's a huge blue pyramid in front of me. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Who knew that pyramids existed in California? One of the rare Dunkin' Donuts in Southern California. What's going on up here on these shingles? Look at these shingles stacked on top of that roof, just teetering there. 
one stiff wind just make them all tumble down here onto the road. A lot of police cars there in a row. See behind me, that's my van. It took me an hour and a half, approximately, an hour to an hour and a half, give or take, to find that parking spot here in Long Beach, California. There's an event going on that I'm going to right now. Good Lord, I get so stressed out when it comes to parking. All the parking near the event is around $30 a pop. And since I'm only gonna be staying for a very short while, I didn't really deem it necessary to pay the 30 bucks. So I made the mistake of thinking that I could drive around aimlessly till I found a parking spot. This did not prove beneficial because it took an exorbitant amount of time and years off my life based on the amount of stress. I'm trying to find a stupid parking spot, but success has happened. And now going on to the event. I always have this philosophy that it's better just to pay the money to park than to deal with the stress. And today I neglected to follow my own advice. So now my stress level is up here and it's now slowly, slowly tapering back. Okay, carrying on. One of the downfalls of street parking is I only get two hours. It's the face of a woman right here. Look at this, this mural in the face of a woman outside this hotel. I don't think I'm allowed to go that way. They got it taped off pretty good, <laughs> pretty good. Let's go down here. Here it is, look at this. Race cars right on the water in Long Beach. This guy just does not give a fork lift. seeing those cars whip around the track like that there's also like a whole little area here where you can buy food and knickknacks and things so you know that's where I'm headed kind of similar to the same things they have at like a county fair that's what these food carts remind me of they probably were at the fair they probably go from the fair to different events all around the country that's what I'm guessing out of all the booths out here the California lottery booth has the most people in it I guess race fans really like to gamble okay I take that back this has the longest line I've seen so far. In line to meet this guy, King Taco. I gotta be honest though, I really don't know what I want to eat for lunch. Hmm, decisions, decisions. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Get your merchandise right there. And here seems to be like the little kitty play area. I'm still looking for food though. Still looking for food. Whoa, look at that mural. That's cool, look at that. They had this crazy little toy racetrack in there. The cars were speeding by so incredibly quick and the people who were the pit crew had to stop them from wrecking and putting them back on there. They were moving really, really fast. It was pretty cool. Dang, those look really good. This is what I'm consuming. A bacon wrapped humongous, either a sausage or a hot dog. I'm not sure which, it doesn't matter. They're both very delicious. Some onions, some green peppers, and what is this gargantuan pepper off to the right? I don't know if I should eat that, but they gave it to me. Do you ever think about how awesome certain inventions are? Ones that get forgotten about, like napkins? If I did not have a napkin, I would be running around like a dog licking my paws. trying to stop us off. Ooh, that guy's doing a little vlog himself in the back of that truck. Okay, I'm crossing. I'm crossing over the racetrack right now. This might be a little dangerous. Oh, is there a, look at there's a ramp right there. There's a freaking ramp right there. What's this guy doing? He really wants in that bathroom. Whoa, what's going on over there? 
That's not politically correct. That guy was seriously banging on the porta potty door for about 20 seconds before I actually filmed the little bit that I filmed, pushing it back and forth. I don't know if his friend was in there, his wife was in there. Gotta love alcohol. Is it just me or is this fire hydrant really long and narrow? More long and narrow than a normal fire hydrant. Maybe I'm overthinking it. My two hours on my parking meter has expired. I wanna thank Jesse for the ticket to the race here in Long Beach. Really cool. I think from what I heard, someone said this was the last year they're gonna be doing this. So it was cool that I got to check this out. This, however, really cracks me up. You think they could just put like a barricade up? One of those Bob's barricades? You know that guy Bob that runs that barricade company that you see everywhere? Nope, they just put up some caution tape. I don't know if you can see it or not, but on the side of that building, there's a few metal gentlemen on a tightrope swinging from it, doing their calisthenics right on the side of that building. You don't see that every day. After that hot dog and all that pre-racing fun, I'm really thirsty. And now it's time for Ask Adam the Woo! Don't forget the hashtag. I still want to know about the Kerplunk tattoo. A quick story about it, please. This is a tattoo from the Green Day album Kerplunk, and it's tattooed on my arm. I got the tattoo about 10 years ago, maybe even longer than that now. Green Day has moved on to become bigger and better things. They're this huge band. I think they actually got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I am more of an old school Green Day fan. In fact, Mike Durnt, the bass player, Never met him personally, but subconsciously and vicariously, he motivated me and inspired me to pick up the bass guitar, which led me to a career in music. I don't play in bands anymore, but I still have my Green Day tattoo. Where do I get a pair of those awesome red and white sunglasses you sport? These things are pretty hard to find these days. A few years ago, they used to have them at Disney outlets around Orlando, the Kissimmee, Florida area, and I got a few pair. In fact, there's a vlog from years ago of me selling a few pair off. Day number 181 is where you can find the glasses. Hey, look. There they are, look. Dun, dun, dun. Look at this. Oranges. That, that's a, a rotten orange. Don't look at the rotten orange, but look at this. I wish I had not have sold them now, because this is my last pair. So if you know how to get a hold of some, get a hold of me, because I would like to purchase some more of these, because once these are broken, they don't exist anymore. I know they're out there. They're very hard to find. Disneyland does not have them anymore. Walt Disney World does not have them. Even the outlets do not have them. Sad. How do you unwind after a long day of filming? P.S. First tweet ever. Welcome to the wonderful world of tweeting, my friend. How do I unwind? That's a very good question. Usually I just relax, maybe get a little snack before bed, maybe watch a couple YouTube videos or watch a sitcom on DVD and just kind of wind down. I'm more of an early to bed, early to rise kind of guy, so I go to bed kind of early. A lot of quietness, a lot of peaceful quietness. I don't like a lot of crazy noise. Like my cell phone's always on silent. I don't really have the radio blaring. If I'm not in front of the television watching it, the television is not on. So I just kind of like to be alone with my thoughts a lot of times. That's pretty much how I wind down. Since you go to so many places to eat, do you ever cook? And if so, what's your favorite? I must admit, I am very much a slacker when it comes to cooking at home. I don't know why, I did it for a long time, but recently, especially since I do the vlogs, I always like to experience new things and eat out more than often. I eat about once a day. Normally every day, I either eat lunch or dinner somewhere, and I usually show it in the vlog. People sometimes ask, why do you eat out so much? And it's kind of weird because it's kind of the nature of the beast by showing these in these daily vlogs because people want to see what I'm eating and what I'm doing. Sometimes I don't like eating out though. Sometimes I will make stuff at home. But when I say that, I say that with a grain of salt because it's usually a microwavable meal or a pot pie in the oven or some ramen soup or something that can be cooked very easily. I am no Jack Tripper. I am not a chef, much as I like John Ritter. Unfortunately... I can't cook. And in case you didn't notice, I am taking this Q&A today, very casual, and I've taken my socks off. Don't be alarmed. They're not nuclear. Are you telling me that these socks are nuclear? Of course! For the nuclear reaction, I needed a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of the socks I need. 
Why do I sound so much like Seinfeld when I do Doc Brown? And that has been another edition of Ask Adam the Ask Adam the Woo. The ask was like a little too deep. Instead of ask, I said ask, 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 ask. Tweet me. <laughs> Hashtag Adam the Woo. Tweet me. And put a video clip so I can show you guys yourself in the vlog. Ask, ask, ask Adam the Woo. I gotta go to the store. I'm gonna make a sandwich, watch some TV, and hit the hay. How do these socks get in here?